Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again. Now it's time for episode 214 of Album of the Day. <coughs> In which for today's album review, I'm going to be talking about a San Francisco band that's known for take for blending uh, genres such as black metal, uh, and shoegaze, and indie rock into a sound that most people would consider black gaze. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the San Francisco band known as Death Heaven. Uh, they've put out over four records. Uh, uh, they're currently signed to Anti Records, and I'm here to review their uh, most recent album, their fourth studio album, which was released on July 13th this year of 2018. And the album is called Ordinary Corrupt Human Love, and as you can see, I have it on vinyl here. Um, this is a record that um, uh, was a little unexpected uh, how much I love this album because uh, I don't listen to a lot of metal music, you know, I'm not really a big fan of the genre personally, uh, but uh, I did hear uh, one song that teased for this record, the song Canary Yellow, uh, and I thought it was a total jam, and I thought it was really cool how they took the, the black metal style and kind of uh, also fused it with uh, some very gorgeous, kind of uh, very immersive shoegazy guitars. Um, so uh, I went ahead and checked out the entire record and I definitely uh, really loved it uh, and uh, thought, you know, it was definitely a great record for like more the casual metal fan like me. Um, really nice album cover. And then there's the back. There's seven songs in this record, and it's over an hour and a minute long because most of these tracks actually are kind of like these long 10 plus minute pieces, with only a few of them being like shorter tracks. And, and of course, Anti Records put out this record. Um, and you know, I love me a gatefold. So there's a really nice gatefold here that's got the lyrics on it. And, liner notes, and there's like a picture of uh, like a little child uh, next to a pretty beautiful like poem that I think kind of permeates the, th the lyrical themes of this record, uh, which is, Spring is mine, in the heat trapped between our cup palms, I hold every spring on earth. Nice. And uh, I managed to get it on colored vinyl, which I'm very excited about. This nice blue vinyl, side A and side B. <laughs> side C and side B. And it sounds great on vinyl, by the way. And that's the vinyl packaging for Ordinary Corrupt Human Love, the new album from Death Heaven. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is definitely a record that, you know, if, uh, sure, some people that, you know, do listen to metal might really like this record, but I also definitely think that this is a record that, like, even people that don't, this is a band and an album that even people that don't, typically listen to the genre can still really get into because you know they they definitely are very much kind of you know bending genres here you know something that you know may upset a purist metal fan but you know kind of please the more kind of open-minded sort of uh listeners um i mean uh i mean uh one example of this album being different from the conventional metal record is like the opening track, You Without End, the first thing we hear uh, is literally the soothing sound of what sounds kind of like a, uh, a stream or something like that before it goes into this really gorgeous piano melody uh, accompanied by kind of weepy slide guitars 
Uh, then the song eventually builds up, uh, where uh, the melody like uh, gets a little more cinematic as it builds, and it has this really beautiful spoken word passage. It's actually taken from a, uh, a short story written by Tom Mc, uh, McLeavery called uh, Black and Borax. And uh, if you listen very carefully, the words of what this woman saying them is uh, uh, saying, it really does sort of uh, create a nice little opening kind of thesis statement for the whole record. Uh, but then eventually, uh, right after this spoken word, uh, the song eventually goes into true metal territory with some very cool, like, cinematic riffs and tortured black metal vocals from from lead singer George Clark, uh, which uh, I like how uh, his lyrics may be kind of hard to detect at first, uh, but, you know, like, the more you listen to it, like, even though he's literally screeching these lyrics like a torture victim, he's really, he's really making these lyrics readable, and the lyrics I don't think are really all that dark, uh, to be completely honest. Uh, Honest, like uh, they rather. This is a uh, probably one of the most meditative metal records you're bound to hear uh, in this year of 2018. Um, and yet it works as he as he screeches lines like "Let it go as it grows on forever," and we breathe it in. Uh, and it's definitely a great opener for the record because uh, it definitely. Uh, really uh, shows uh, some themes of beauty right away and beauty right away and it makes it really nice transition into the more into the slightly heavier honeycomb uh, <coughs> excuse me. the slightly heavier honeycomb which is like this incredible like song that opens up with right away with some killer riffs and George Clark sort of talking about, sort of, uh, kind of the things that he really appreciates about, like, being in San Francisco and sort of, you know, <clears throat> uh, witnessing uh, the scene every day. And I love how the song very much makes numerous key changes throughout its 11 minutes and 7 seconds. Uh, hmm, in seconds, uh, but it still, like, all manages to flow really well, and it doesn't just simply feel like them trying to squeeze in many ideas at once just for the sake of it. Uh, of it and the lyrics maintain strength throughout. So, throughout. And some of the words in the, uh, like, second verse of the song are, are definitely some of the best on the record. <coughs> record, some really nice poeticisms there. My love is a nervous child lapping from the glowing lagoon of their presence. And then say, my love is a bulging, blue-faced foal, hung from the throat by sunflower stems. Uh, so it starts out kind of melancholy and introspective, but then that second line is definitely a little more kind of uh, visceral and kind of uh, in your face. Uh, face, but like it's sort. Of, I love how the band manages to sort of. The, the lyrics are essentially kind of like these poems that are basically kind of translated into like like hard rock music. Rock music. Uh, it's like some great drumming and guitar playing and it transitions really well into this very beautiful into this uh, very beautiful uh, kind of colorful uh, shoegazy uh, shoegazy coda, uh, which eventually uh, closes out with some wheezing Mellotron flutes that transition really well into the song that I just highlighted, Canary Yellow. <clears throat> uh, Canary Yellow, which uh, which is another example of a song that you know does tackle metal music, but it definitely doesn't start out that way at first. Like at first, it starts out with. Uh, so uh, with these very kind of so with these very kind of uh, melancholy uh, sort of dreary yet very kind of uh, hopeful uh, shoegaze guitar playing that would definitely appeal to you know 
all you slow dive, my bloody Valentine uh, hardcores out there. <clears throat> Chords out there, and uh, the melodies that they create are just so beautiful. I mean, so beautiful. Uh, the kind of melodies that kind of get, you know, that kind of, you know, uh, get stuck in you for a while. Uh, while, but after those two minutes, uh, minutes, uh, the song eventually gets this really cool, like, kind of noisy sort of lead guitar riff that, you know, transitions uh, into that, like, you know, transitions into the madness. Uh. <clears throat> so, and, and like Honeycomb, this song does have, like, numerous kind of key changes going on, uh, on in terms of, like, the tempo and uh, the sound, but uh, still at the same time manages to really uh, work well. <clears throat> well, and uh, George Clark sort of brings up imagery of like uh, birds and stuff like that, which is kind of like a symbolism for, which is kind of symbolism. I mean, the title of this record, uh, I think, pretty much uh, summarizes what the album is really about lyrically. It's so lyrically, uh, and it's just, um, so, and it's like very poetic, as he says, uh, says, Charmer altruist, who immersed in thickets, hugged in cloth, evolves in the charcoal, is worshipped by the drifting macaw, and sort of wondering about, uh, the language of flowers, whereas, and I, and I really like how the final verse of the song sort of, sort of starts out kind of, you know, shouted by George Clark, and then some really cool kind of eerie gang vocals eventually sing it, like, by the end of the song. <coughs> uh, so by the end of the song. Uh, it's definitely a great track and a perfect centerpiece for the record, uh, so it makes sense that this song was the one that kind of initially got initially like piqued my interest to listen to this record uh record uh even the quieter tracks on this record i think are great like the song near i think is a really gorgeous ballad uh ballad it starts out very kind of soothing and relaxing on the ears uh but then like uh, the riff eventually turns a little more kind of uh, but then, eventually, uh, the riff gets a little more feedback on it uh, so that sort of shows that uh, there's still a subtle kind of bit of oomph, s subtle extra bit of oomph and oomph, and still a little bit of noise and acid to uh, even by far the most kind of, uh, to even like the quietest riffs. Um, this riffs, uh, so it makes sense that this is still, this still very much counts as a song, even if it only has just a few lines in it, uh, lines in it, but it's, uh, just enough to, you know, make this, uh, still leave an impression on the listener, uh, listener, thanks to its very beautiful, uh, kind of spacey riffs, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the song Glint is definitely uh, another one of my favorite tracks on this record. Uh, record, and I would say this song uh, musically may be kind of the darkest moment here on the record, uh, which kind of makes sense they would do that because uh, their previous record, New Bermuda, I heard was by far the darkest record they've ever put out. Uh, put out, though still receiving some like widespread acclaim and stuff like that. Um, that. I'm going to have to check that one out sometime along with their uh, second record, their breakout record, which was 2013 Sunbather. Uh, Teen Sunbather, uh, like Glint, is definitely uh, one of the true highlights of this record. <sighs> true highlights of this record. I love the very kind of, it's, uh, I love the kind of uh, melancholy riffs uh, that open up the song, uh, they transition really nicely into, nicely into, uh, probably the most kind of, uh, intense sort of black metal instrumental that you'll hear probably on this record. 
Mm -hmm. record, and I, uh, and this is yet another song where, uh, so, and, and this song does, uh, use the key changes and stuff like that, uh, but it all, uh, like, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned about the key changes is, uh, in those moments, uh, you can hear, like, uh, George Clark kind of, you know, shouting to make his lyrics sound kind of blurred, and, <laughs> blur sound kind of blurred and stuff like that, but you're still able to uh, detect them. And and he sort of spits out, you know, different amounts of words uh, at a time. So a line that you've heard before is just like yelped a little bit faster with like extra words uh, put on uh, to it. And, it's, and it sounds pretty killer, I would say. Say, so, when he says, uh, Imagining us clasping hands in holiday, imagining you growing older, somehow more beautiful, full. Uh, and I would say lyrically, this is probably some of the most kind of cryptic on the entire record, especially that final line of, I'm shrinking into your gown, tearing the pink linen of your belly, burying into your abdomen, and sowing the seed of your skin. Bound to give you chill bumps right there. Uh, Bumps right there, and this song also has a pretty incredible guitar solo, and probably, maybe the best uh, guitar solo probably on the entire album. On the album, I would say. I mean, uh, I mean, this track is yeah, pretty yeah, insanely amazing. Um, <clears throat> sing another ballad that can be heard on this record is the song "Night People," which song Night People, which features guest vocals from uh, uh, goth rocker Chelsea Wolfe, uh, whom I've, I've never really listened to much, but yeah, I'm going to have to check her out sometime. Uh, she, like, handles some of the production on this song, which you can definitely hear some of the, like, kind of eerie goth tones on this song. <coughs> tones on this song. This song uh, in the kind of dreary, foggy pianos, the pianos in the kind of tense bass synth, and the kind of tense uh, rumbling bass synth, uh, pulling bass synth, and the kind of uh, and the kind of fragmented vocal samples as well. Uh, well, uh, even though I will say the song is probably my uh, least favorite track on the record because. I will say, uh, you know, like, I, there definitely are some cool instrumental elements on the song, but the song is, like, sometimes, like, so kind of dreary to, but I feel that the song feels, like, so dreary to the point where it's maybe taken a little overboard. <coughs> point where it's taken, getting a little overboard, like, uh, the instrumental just kind of pales in comparison. Uh, with a good chunk of the record. Uh, the record, though, there are some great lyrics on the song, and I will say that George Clark and Chelsea Wolfe's voices on the song do sound really gorgeous together. So, really gorgeous together. Uh, that's one thing I will say. Uh, so, and there's still some great elements on here. I really like the kind of caveman type percussion going on. Uh, towards the middle of the song, it's just like, uh, you know, it's kind of, yeah, it, it just, you know, feels a little campy and cheesy, in my opinion. Mm hmm Let's see, my opinion. Uh, uh, the closing track, Worthless Animal, I, I will say, is a pretty worthy closer to this record. Uh, this is the one song where uh, the, you hear the black metal vo vocals truly blended in with shoegaze instruments. Uh, Gays, so despite the title having the word worthless in it, this is anything but a worthless outro for the record. Um, mm. Throw, and it definitely has some really cool sort of instrumental moments. I love uh, the part where after the second verse of the song, uh, the song gets almost kind of gets almost kind of funky in its groove a little bit. Uh, before it eventually uh, transitions into kind of the, before it eventually transitions into uh, the more, 
positions into the heavier kind of uh, section. Mm. Section with beautiful lyrics such as When a fawn stumbles into the road, honeydew high and deep in afterglow, mind swarming on purple sand verbena, I forgive its delusion, caress its worldview, super bloom. Uh, bloom. And just like the song Glint, this song also closes out with some pretty goosebump inducing lyrics like, uh, like I bury a blade between its ribs, bear hug the soft canine frame then smear ash on its brow. All who have forgotten, remember now. Which is a perfect closing line for this album, pretty much. Uh, but So it's definitely uh, the perfect closer for this record, though I will say that my one constructive criticism of it is I wish the song didn't really fade out the way it did. Uh, like, I, I think when it, you know, faded out, it was kind of in sort of an awkward sort of moment, uh, considering it did have some really beautiful riffs uh, towards the end. Uh, and though I do get, though I guess it does kind of work as sort of uh, transitioning into those sound effects that sound very similar to um, the effects that sound very similar to what I heard at the beginning of the record. Uh, of the record, and I like how it sort of feels kind of like a car just kind of driving away from it, almost. Uh, most, just uh, like, uh, if it didn't, uh, maybe if it faded out just a little bit later, I, you know, it wouldn't have been, you know, as much a flaw. But overall, uh, Ordinary Corrupt Human Love is a very solid record from front to back. I mean, uh, this one was uh, definitely very unexpected surprise that I came across uh, in this year. Uh, this in this year, uh, definitely uh, a record with uh, fantastic songwriting, uh, a very like uh, inspired blending of genres that like uh, actually uh, really manages to work. Um, work got uh, some really unique song structures throughout uh, and also a good album flow. It uh, definitely feels like a fully fleshed out like shoegaze metal kind of album. Uh, so definitely gonna go with an 8 out of 10 for this new Deaf Heaven record, Ordinary Corrupt Human Love, and I'll see you for episode, um, episode 215. And have a happy Thanksgiving everyone.